I almost pulled my light right off the desk. Have y'all heard that joke that collecting fabric and sewing are two totally different hobbies? It's pretty funny, but it's also kind of true because if you are new to sewing or if you've been sewing for a while, you now understand the temptation and the pull of the always getting the new fabrics. Today I'm here to talk to you about how I store my fabric. I have a great system. It's not super intuitive. I think most people, when they start to accumulate fabric, they think they need shelves and then they start stacking it. Or the worst option, they get like um, Rubbermaid bins and they just stow it all in there. But that is not very practical. It's not very accessible. And it's not necessarily the, safe to, the safest option for your fabric, especially the shelf choice because it's out there exposed to dust and sunlight. It could fade, etc. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I store my fabric. I purposefully did not clean it up before this video because I want you to see how neat it remains while it's stored even as I'm busy in here all the time using it. So I'm Nikki, this is Pin Cut Sew. I'm very glad you're here today because this is about fabric storage and organization. I have had some other videos where I've touched on this a little bit. I had a recent one about, well, I was cleaning out my sewing room. I've also had one about my very small space, how I keep my space clean and tidy and organized being very small but i've also had very large spaces and i have blog posts about those too so i think i also have a video about sewing room organization in general where you can see more of what i keep in my sewing room and how i store it but this one today is just about the fabric itself the organization system that i have it is perfect i will never veer off of it so let's get started okay let me start by telling you again can you see me now um, this is something that you have probably seen before in other videos, but I have been asked specifically about this. This was a secondhand dresser that someone handmade. My husband bought it and he thought that I would use it in our bedroom for like my clothes. But as you can see, it's absolutely gigantic. It's ridiculous for a bedroom, but I did want a large cutting table. So what we did was I painted it, replaced the knobs, and he put a new top on it that was bigger than the table and it extends farther back. And at the time, he also put it on big casters so that it could be moved around my then bigger space. But the best part about it is the storage. This is not the first time I've used a dresser for fabric storage. So even if you don't find a huge one like this, drawers are my number one secret to storing your fabric. Let me show you why. Okay, this is how I store. These are all of my quilting cottons. You can see they are not stacked, they are filed. And this is a tip I learned from good old Marie Kondo when I read her book, The Magic Art, Magic Art of Tidying Up, something like that. Anyway, the book I thought was a little bit out there, but this filing system started with my clothing. I still fold my clothes like this, and then it moved on to my fabric drawers. And the reason I love it is because you can see everything i can see every piece of fabric i have i'm not digging through piles it also makes it so that nothing gets shoved to the bottom and never seen again i can see everything very clearly so i have that drawer and then i have this drawer and so this is my second tip is i store fabrics by size and by use so here is all my larger pieces of cottons for projects and quilting and things. And then I have some smaller sizes that would sort of get lost in that drawer that I keep inside this bin in this drawer. And then back here I have holiday fabrics. This is all Christmas and a tiny bit of Easter and Valentine's Day. Here I have a few specialty things, but this is all of my smaller scraps, um, but not my smallest scraps. I'll show you those in a minute. And then I have one more big drawer of fabric. This is garment fabric. This drawer does get a little bit more out of hand. And then this is, this is a cotton that doesn't fit in my top drawer. It's just so big because I bought it for quilt backing. So this drawer, because the fabrics are more slippery, it does get out of control a little bit easier, but not so bad that I can't very easily fix it. Okay, so for my very, very small scraps, I have a drawer over here where I keep those. And so this brings me to my next tip is to sort them not only by use and by size, but then lastly, sort them by color. So I have neutrals in this bin. This is where I, I just keep this drawer open because I'm usually standing here working. And right here to my left, I can dig out pieces that I need and I can toss in pieces that I'm done with, but want to save. 
So here's my reds and pinks, blues and purples, greens and yellows. This is like a multicolored pile. This is neutrals. Okay, you may have noticed that regardless of the amount of sewing that I do, which is a lot, I do not have a crazy amount of fabric. And so my final tip is, when your space gets full of fabric, it is not the time to buy more storage. I know I'm a broken record, I have said this before, but it is not the time to buy more storage or find more storage in your guest room shower or under your bed. It is time to use or purge some of the fabric that you already have. So if my cotton drawer starts to get really full and I'm having to really squeeze things into it, I plan a quilt project or I make some gifts or I go through it and I get rid of some things that I don't really like anymore, I donate them. I am not precious about using good fabric. If my daughter comes in and she wants to make a quilt, she can use whatever she wants. There's very little in here that I have a specific plan for. And so try not to hold too tightly to those fabrics. It's better they get used while they're still in style, right? So, and then I have, if you noticed, I probably didn't show this in the video, you didn't see it. I do keep on top of my desk a little bin of fabrics and that is because I'm currently using those for this uh, wonky house quilt I'm working on. <laughs> So those are sort of in constant rotation right now and I don't wanna to have to dig through the drawer for them every time and I'm, I sort of pulled out several that I need for that project and I keep them there and then once I'm done with that project, I'll put them away and I, I do like to have some little Tupperware bins around for current projects just so that my fabrics aren't spread all over the place while I'm working on things, especially something like this that I've had to sort of put down and pick back up a couple of times because of Christmas sewing and things like that. So to recap, my tips are closed storage, not open storage, file, don't stack your fabrics. Oh, that brings me to, there's a trend. This has been going on for many years. People will buy like comic book cards, you know, the cardboard that goes in comic books. Um, and they will wrap their fabrics carefully around them and file them on a bookshelf. So they're still filed upright, which make, does make more sense than stacking. And then they'll file them on shelf which is great. It's fine if that works for you. It would drive me absolutely insane to have to rewrap those fabrics every time, especially if there's odd sized pieces or whatever falling off of the pieces. That would just make me crazy. I do a lot of scrappy sewing. I, I rarely use everything that I pull out, but I like to be able to pull things out and not worry that I'm gonna have to spend time wrapping them back up. So um, that's just my two cents on that. Third was um, sort by use and then by size and then by color. Color. And fourth is clean out often. Don't add more storage, just use more fabric. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you are the opposite kind of fabric store as me and you like to have everything out in the open, or if you swear by some other system that you have, please tell us about it in the comments. And yeah, we wanna hear all about it. Also, I'm gonna link to the blog post I have about my dresser so that you can read exactly how we did that. But any anything with drawers, any dresser will do. It doesn't have to have a cutting table on top. It could even be turned into your ironing station. You could pad it out and that can be your ironing board. So there's lots of uses for dressers in all parts of your house, not just bedrooms, I have learned. So yeah, I will see you all soon. Hope you have a good one, bye. And it is not, my son is exclaiming over something.